I've never liked Golden Point. I like it a lot less now. Hello guys, ETA99 here and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about the Newcastle Knights. The team I support. Look at the Chonk logo on the hoodie. Um, we're going to be talking about just sort of their first couple of rounds um, in the 2024 NRL season and sort of discussing um, uh, what's going on. What's, uh, what's happening? Now, obviously, unless you've been living under a rock and haven't really been paying attention to rugby league recently, uh, the Newcastle Knights are 0-2 to start the season. It's like the old, um, I think it's the joke they use it for Collingwood. I think in the AFL, it's like, knock, knock, who's there? Owen, Owen who? Owen 2, because, because, uh, they were geniuses. Um, basically, uh, the Newcastle Knights in round one lost to the Canberra Raiders at home in the home opener, and have lost in golden points to the North Queensland Cowboys yesterday. And um, for me to say, I don't think the performances very much have matched up to, you know, obviously the the, the 10 game winning streak that uh, got us into uh, the finals positioning last year. And I just want to say, this video is not going to be me saying it's like, oh, we're done. We need to sack whoever, drop whatever. It's not going to be one of those videos. Purely because it's literally round two but i do feel like there needs to be sort of like a bit of a consensus looked into it because i don't know why but for the last couple of years but very much this year i've never seen like social media like surrounding rugby league being so short-term reactionary like i'm already seeing teams having lines put through them for this year like one of them being the Knights, for example, of saying, oh, the Knights are frauds and like stuff like that. Hell, I've even seen people after round one doing it to teams. I remember, I think, a couple of people doing it to the Gold Coast after they lost to the Dragon. And it's just like, what? <laughs> but yeah, um, obviously, more so in terms of the Canberra game, I was there. At that game in um, against Canberra, we um, did not play well. It was just... It felt like the preseason had just sort of carried on, and it's like, what the, what are we doing? I mean, to be fair, I don't think Campbell, Campbell didn't play that great either, but they, uh, obviously eventually in the second half, they played a lot better than us and were able to run away with it, and it's just the Knights kept making, like, quite silly mistakes and just didn't really know what we were doing on the field, which was a bit frustrating, and then... Going into yesterday's match against the Cowboys, I thought we actually had a really good first half. We smothered them. We didn't let them really do that much with the ball. Like every, like they had two attempts to kick it in a touch for a penalty, and we batted it back in. And I think we did really well. <laughs> to be fair, the Cowboys were, were helping us in that regard because they had like what, like a lot of mistakes in that first half. But I do feel like. The, we go into the half 12 nil up wasn't re should have been a bit very much a bit higher and then um immediately in the second half the cowboys switched on uh come into it we did get to try to mars you and then we basically was just drastic defending for like 10 15 minutes and then jeremiah and i went over and equalized and it just sort of like you knew it was coming and then it's like oh here we go valentine holmes is um, going to convert this to make it a two-point lead for the Cowboys and then miss it because for some reason the Cowboys love doing that. And then the Knights actually got the ball and had a really good chance to get a field goal and then a uh, one-on-one strip happened. It's just whatever happened. And then Golden Point happened, which should not be a thing. And uh, Chad Townsend slotted it to make it a 21-20 victory to the Cowboys. In my opinion, I do think the Knights were the better team in the first half, but... And I don't want to, and the Cowboys were the overall the better team in the second half, but they also made it in those moments count when they needed to. Well, the Knights were defending for a considerate amount of time and were doing fairly well. They kept the Cowboys out until the moments where you really shouldn't let them in. Like genuinely, in, in terms of that second half, it's like the Cowboys should have really run away with it, but it's just the Knights just kind of held on to it and then eventually they gave in and whatever and what happened happened um i don't think it wasn't exactly the best performance for the cowboys i mean like the first half was really bad for them but um they had the talent that was able to pull a result out of it and that's what you want in these good teams is even though it is not the best like 
overall play and quality of being consistent, you at least want them to pull the results, and that's what the good teams do. And it's good that the Cowboys are finally, like, you know, properly utilizing the star players that they have. I mean, they did do it last year a fair bit. It's just uh, not to the extent that they definitely should have. But to look for the Knights, there are a few pro- problems. And I think the main one, obviously, is this playmaker situation. Like, as somebody who's been doing stuff in terms of, like, the media, in terms of studies and, like, doing volunteer work and stuff like that, in revol- revolving around the media, specifically, like, in Newcastle for sport, there has been a considerate amount of talk in, about that for, like, the last couple of months about signing all these playmakers. As, oh, yeah, these battles are going to be really good because it's going to be, like, wanting to, like, you know... Be, have a competitive edge and stuff like that, but it just hasn't worked initially. Now, because obviously you had Tyson Gamble and Jackson Hastings hold on to their positions, but then the Knights have brought in Jack Cogger, who, in my opinion, if it wasn't for him, uh, Penrith wouldn't have won the grand final last year. And this has sort of proved a very interesting battle. And by the way, Cogger went and was actually, you know, got the two tries to Adam Elliott in the first half. He's making a pretty good case to a start. But then it, that's not even the only type of the playmakers, because you've also got another one in Phoenix Crossland, who's the currently the hooker. He's a converted hooker, but he was a playmaker in his in his heyday. And um, it is good to have like a former halfback in at your number nine, but it just it can also get into a lot of creative problems because it's like, oh, what do we do? It's like we don't really have a sort of play style that we had at that tail end of last year. And I know that people can definitely point to the losses of like the players that we have, have left uh, the club since last year, obviously Dom Young being a major one, but I feel like even if Dom Young was still in the team, we'd probably still not be winning. Like we would definitely would not have won that Canberra game, even if Dom Young was still in the field. But genuinely, I feel like Lachlan Fitzgibbon is actually starting to look like a massive loss because him alongside on the side of Marju, uh, Best, and Ponga actually was making it like very de- a deadly left edge for the Knights. And it's just, it's sort of been missing. We, we, granted, we are starting to see Kai Pierce Paul, but he's a bloke that does need to adapt to the Australian game. It was his first full start. Uh, for the Knights, and I think he did alright with the circus. I mean, even in like the first game, he came on at the second half, and it's just the, the Knights were just in this weird sort of lull. But yeah, looking into like when we look into like next week where we play Melbourne, which is going to be fun, I honestly feel if we want to have a hope of winning that game, Cogger should start. That's just me. Whether it's like Gamble that comes on at number 14, which could be a good role for him. But it is. I mean, a lot of people are calling for Cogger to start. Like, I think Matty Johns for like the last two months has been going, yes, Cogger should be the one starting. But in all, in all, the, the results weren't didn't really make me angry or stuff like that. It's just like, oh, we didn't really play that well. But we are showing signs of positivity and whatnot. But then the press conference happened after the match, and for some reason, some of the wording from Adam O'Brien really irked me. And I was thinking, this is not what you should be saying. Like, he did, he talked about how the team was showing a considerate amount of grit, which was true in the second half with our defensive effort to keep the Cowboys out. I mean, going into the break 12 nil up and um, having to be put in that situation is not really the greatest showing of grip, but I can understand why he used that. And then he was talking about building foundation. That right there, alarm bells just started ringing because of like, you don't really hear this talk about building foundations from a team that, you know, finished fifth. Like, you know, was a couple of points off top four. And had a the longest, like one of the longest winning streaks the club's ever had. There was a lot of hype and optimism about the Knights. It's like, oh, they're back to being maybe a good team. That's why so many people have put money behind. Like the Knights have got like twenty five thousand members, which has never been that high for the club. But building foundations, it's like, why is a team that came fifth talking like that? And I do understand that. Yes, a couple of players have gone, but it's not like the whole team has been replaced. Like, I understand that this was, like, a rebuild that you talk about that. Okay, fair enough. Like, 
but this is not should not be coming out of the mouth of a team that is you know wanting to repeat the sort of positions and go better even like attempt top four like this is the type of things that like in terms of like a press conference probably like cameron soraldo or Benji Marshall should be saying, not Adam O'Brien. And it kind of does worry me because looking at how the Knights have been playing over the first two rounds and then looking to our upcoming matches, there's not really a game we can say that goes, oh, we'll win this. There really isn't. Like, round three, but next week we play Melbourne, which is always a hard ask, regardless of how well we're going or how well Melbourne are going, it is always very hard for us to beat them. Then round four, we play New Zealand over there. And we don't need to remind ourselves what happened last time because it wasn't really good. And I know the Warriors have been showing a little bit of weird signs, but the, I do think the Warriors have been playing better football. Like we saw from the game last night against the Storm and they pretty much had the game won until Xavier Coates decided to go into creative mode and just levitate. <laughs> and then... Round five, we play the Dragons at home. And this is put a bit against, oh yeah, we like before the season we said, oh yeah, we would have won this. Sort of in the same way we would have said about the Canberra game. But looking at how the Dragons played in round one, now obviously this video is going to be going up the same day they play the Dolphins, so I don't know what that result's going to be. But that's not a match you can say that we're going to win either. And this could be a bit of a consensus problem. And this could be a continuous problem with the Knights for this season. It's just, it could be very much, it's just going to be a bit of a lull. And it's like, well, what what happened? It's like a wasted season, which is what I'm sort of worried about. But I do at least have a, I mean, it's round two. Like, I, I still have hope that, obviously, the Knights could, like, turn around and stuff like that. I mean, there's, like, what, 25 other rounds to go. Like, I think even made me making this video this early is a little bit um, odd, but... And I mean, the Knights real kind of proved last year that you really don't need to do anything until, like, July. So, anyways, that's going to be the end of this sort of Knights discussion. I do apologize if it's a little bit all over the place, but hopefully when I edit this down, it does make a lot of coherent sense. What are your guys' thoughts currently on the Knights, and what do you think are going to be... What are the main issues you see... You see currently happening or which could carry on over the rest of the season and what do they need to do to try to fix it so uh, let me know in the comments below thank you all very much for watching and i will see you all later